Good afternoon. My name is Robert Cooper, Artistic Director for the Orpheus Choir of Toronto. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to our Sidgwick Scholar Salon here in Toronto's historic Old Mill. We are thrilled to have a small but mighty gathering of supporters here today, all masked, distanced, and ready to enjoy the wonderful talents of our Sidgwick Scholars. The Sidgwick Scholar Salon is our annual fundraiser to support these superb young emerging artists and their participation, their leadership, and their performance with the Orpheus Choir. And this year, I'm happy to say we are not virtual only. We are actually rehearsing live, in person, double-backed, masked, distanced, live music, and live singing. That's a good applause. <laughs> Many of you have generously answered our donation call. And as we begin today's salon, I'm very pleased to tell you that we have already raised $15,265. <laughs> So thank you all very, very much. And to those of you at home watching on this live stream and who have not yet had an opportunity to donate, this is your opportunity. Just go to OrpheusChoirToronto.com or look at the options on the bottom of your screen. And to spur you on, one of our very gracious choristers has generously offered a pledge, a matching pledge of $2,500. This is the average honorarium for one of our scholars in the course of our season. So the challenge is for you at home to meet this pledge of $2,500 so we can support two scholars this season. So let's double up and meet this goal over the next hour just look at those options on the bottom of your screen or go to OrpheusChoirToronto.com. So now to our program for this afternoon. Let me introduce our esteemed guest host. This renowned singer is no stranger to Canadian audiences. And in fact, some of you may have indeed seen him last night when he was performing for the Canadian Opera Company's opening concert live stream. And he is no stranger to choral singing. And I'm very proud to say that he once sang in two of my choirs quite a while ago. <laughs> so it's my great pleasure to welcome the incomparable Canadian baritone, Russell Braun. Thank you. Russell, a very warm and appreciative welcome for being with us today. I'm sure you're tired after last night. <laughs> after zooming on the internet waves, yes, that's very tiring. Uh, thanks for that beautiful introduction, Bob. Um, yes, we do go back quite a while, and in fact, Bob was so gracious to let me sing with the university singers back when I wasn't even enrolled yet in my first year of university. I had taken a year off, and sight unseen, or as Bob says, sound unheard, he said, yeah, sure, a male singer will need you in our choir. Um, and that was the beginning of uh, a great love that I've had to this day of singing in choirs and uh, of all things related to choral music. And there's no, no more wonderful person than Bob himself to um, Thank you. Thank you. spearhead this for our... So let's begin. Yes, let's, let's begin. It's your show. I'll go and sit down and you can introduce our wonderful young singers. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's, it's part of the aging process to be asked to do these kind of events because this is a first for me, hosting and uh, singing in public and speaking in public are two very, very different um, experiences and talents and um, the, the script w will sort of come and go here and there, but thankfully the music is here to stay. So I'd love to introduce to you our first singer, um, Leslie Higgins. Leslie 
will be accompanied, and all singers tonight are accompanied by Christopher Dawes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I had a, a brief chance to chat with Leslie just beforehand, and I know singers don't want to talk too much <laughs> before you sing, but I, w I was really fascinated um, by your um, background because you have a rich choral background mm -hmm. as, as well. Um, Leslie did her um, undergraduate uh, degree at the University of Western Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, and do you want to say a few things of your connection to the, to the choral um, yeah, well, I first met our wonderful artistic director, um, Robert Cooper, at the Ontario Youth Choir, and I sang with OYC for four summers, and it's probably one of my richest musical memories. I really loved my time singing with OYC and all of my choir memories. The second I came to Toronto, I knew I wanted to sing with Orpheus, so it's so wonderful to be here today. And wonderful. Of course, yeah. Bob isn't only a, a choral conductor. I remember the first time seeing Robert Cooper in front of an orchestra, and what that <laughs> power unleashes in a, in a person is quite uh, tremendous. I'm sure you've experienced that too. Yeah. And welcome to Toronto yes. um, as well. This is a kind of a fairly new environment for you. Mm -hmm. um, Leslie will be singing. Um, the aria Frère Voyer mm -hmm. from Jules Massenet's opera Werther. And I've asked Leslie just to say a few words about the scene. Yes, um, so I will be singing Frère Voyer. And um, I am Sophie, who is Charlotte's younger, youthful sister. And the, the opera is quite dark, but in this scene, Sophie is desperately trying to cheer up Werther and is reminding him of all of the joy and happiness that there is in the world, which I think is quite suiting for our current situation. So, yes. Absolutely beautiful. Live music. Isn't that incredible? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Beautifully played. Oh, what an experience to witness. Um, and what a great 
program, the Citric Scholars and the Orpheus Choir in supporting singers like this. Wonderful. Our next guest um, is uh, baritone Danli Ray Asebuke. I welcome you to the stage. Um, Dan Lee uh, and I met last year. Uh, Dan Lee is currently enrolled in the opera school program and as many of us who are um, in, involved in teaching and I, I was very lucky during COVID to be you know, established as a teacher, um, I had the great pleasure of getting to know Dan Lee over the internet, over Zoom calls and um, Dan Lee so um, it is exemplary in the way that musicians embraced this isolation and making music in your basement apartments, in your kitchens, in your hallways, name it, just find the music and make music. And Danley has got a wonderful um, positive personality that I really appreciated as an instructor, <laughs> not to mention his talent. But I just wanted to ask you, last year at the very end of opera school there was an event, a sing out, where everybody can just sing what you want. And Dan Lee, I was very, very touched by a song that you sang at that uh, moment, and it comes from your Filipino heritage. So um, with your permission, can you just tell us a little bit about that part yeah. of your life? Um, so it was a very beautiful day that I decided to take out my bottle of rosé and sing some pop song for a musical group. Um, so I sang a piece called Isang Laro, which in English means one game. Um, and it's based on a TV show that I watch that is famous on Netflix, is, and it's about an LGBTQ couple that met on a gaming um, stream. And I really got addicted to the song, and I said, you know what, this is a beautiful song, and let me just sing it to, the, to, the, to my peers. Yeah, it was a really wonderful experience. <laughs> Um, also, of course, the bottle of rosé kind of added a certain <laughs> touch of, of celebration. Um, anyway, Dan, Dan Lee's a wonderful um, colleague to have for the other students. And uh, welcome and thank you for your dedication also to choral singing and Sidgwick. Um, Dan Lee is going to sing an aria that may sound familiar and that slightly kind of harkens back to my past. Um, and I've asked him to introduce the aria that Figaro sings in Il Barbier di Siviglia called Largo al Factotum. So here, Dan Lee, please go ahead. Oh, you want me to introduce? To or? introduce, yes. Oh yeah, um, my name is Dan Lee Asibuke and today Chris Doss and I will be performing Largo al Factotum from the opera Il Barbieri di Siviglia by Rossini. And in this aria, my, I'm Figaro and I'm introducing you all the talents that I can do besides giving everyone a haircut. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
pleasure to hear these arias and these wonderful performers. Um, you may have a chance, to, depending on the situation with COVID, you may have the chance to see the Barber of Seville this year. Just a, a little plug for the, the opera school. Um, um, David Welsh is also going to sing an aria from Barber, and both David and Dan Lee are in the opera program. And we are presenting Il Barbiere di Sevilla in November. Um, we'll keep you posted. But this isn't about the opera school, this is about the wonderful Sidrig um, Scholar Program for you guests here in person and for everybody at home. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. I'd love to introduce our next singer. Um, yes, please welcome Camila Montefusco. Wonderf wonderful to meet you. Um, Camila has a, a very um, intriguing background. Um, and of course, it's not only about your background and such, but what I often as a, a teacher look for in students is the exposure to other types of music and especially the ability to play another instrument. 
and quite often singers will have learned some piano which is quite essential to develop as a singer but Camilla has a very um, rich background as a, a very advanced violinist and I just wanted you to speak a little bit about your um, experience and maybe some of the parallels in technique and making music that you can um, experience with the violin and with singing. Uh, Camila um, did her studies in violin, as you can read from her biography, in Sao Paulo, um, Brazil. So, um, yes, over 17 years, my main instrument was the violin. And uh, back in Brazil, I had my career as a violinist. And I think the most interesting part of this story to me is that as a violinist, playing in the pit orchestra uh, during my time there, playing for many opera productions, that's when I realized a new desire to perform, to be on stage, but now as a singer. Um, so it was you know, three years ago when I came to Canada and I started um, learning the technique and I just realized that there was so much that I learned as a violinist that was applicable because at the end of the day, um, good music right, happens in That's all, wonderful. all of the instruments. So, yeah. Beautiful. I love reminding singers when they sing to, to not pick up any old instrument, but pick up the Stradivarius inside your voice when you sing. And uh, for me, uh, as a, I studied piano, not, not violin, this, this idea of endless breath with the bow is just such a, uh, an enviable um, quality that violins and any string player has. So I, I envy you being able to um, play that instrument as well as you do. And also, thank you for coming to, to Canada. So um, Camilla will sing for us a beautiful aria from um, I Capuletti e di Montecchi by Vincenzo Bellini. Se Romeo tu uccise un figlio. And um, I let Camilla just set up the scene a little bit for you. Please enjoy. In this aria, um, Romeo is begging for forgiveness. And when he realizes that he won't be forgiven for his acts, uh, he swears revenge against the Capulets. <laughs>
beautiful, beautifully delivered and beautifully performed and easy to see that Romeo underneath that burgundy dress, yeah? <laughs> no, wonderfully done, wonderfully done. Um, welcome, Stefan, um, Stefan Vidovic. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you backstage. I heard a little bit of your wonderful singing beforehand, and um, I wanted to ask you about your um, relationship to uh, music. Of, of course, you, you sing opera as well, but this, um, Stefan chose to sing a piece by Kurt Weil tonight, and um, just see what your, your entry was into this type of music. Um, well, Kurt Weil has been uh, somehow coming in and out of my life a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, I was in The Seven Deadly Sins at the Glenn Gould School, the fall opera last year, and that was the first time I got to sing in an opera at that school um, and uh, to sing a Kurt Weil opera, which was really incredible. I think the reason why I come back to him so much is that it's this mix of popular music and opera and operatic technique that to me is just um, unsurpassed in the repertoire. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I always, when I study music for myself or I work with a student, the, the question is always, what is the composer's intention? Mm -hmm. um, and that has so much to do with the, the process of interpretation. Um, it's just to find out what the intention was and with Kurt Weil, that is such a rich treasure to be uncovered. Um, so, uh, Stefan is going to sing Lonely House from a Street Scene by Kurt Weil. Would you like to set up just the, yeah, the scene a little bit for us? Thank you. Um, so, this aria comes right in the middle of the first act. Um, we are in New York City, outside of a tenement building. All day it's been very hot. The families um, of Jews and Poles and Italians have been bickering and fighting. And now the sun has set. Um, it's a little cooler tonight, and my character, Sam Kaplan, steps out in front of the building and sings a song about loneliness, Lonely House. This old house seems to breathe a 
Stefan. This is a little commercial break here, just to let you know about the Cidric Scholar Program. It was initiated to honor the memory of John and Mary Cidric, who created the Orpheus Choir back in the early 60s. And I'm thrilled to say that this legacy continues today to be supported by their son, Peter Sidgwick. So I know Peter's out there on the live stream somewhere, so Peter, to you and your family, our sincerest thanks for your continuing and invaluable support. One of my great satisfactions of the conductor of the Orpheus Choir is finding out where our young scholars end up going after they leave us. We're just the beginning of their journey. And it's my great pleasure to introduce to you now Jocelyn Freilich, who was at the Orpheus Choir back in 2012, where's Jocelyn? 2012, 2014. And after which she went for her master's degree program. And then she went on to Amsterdam to study. She's back, and it's wonderful to see you back again, Jocelyn. Now, when she was with the Orpheus Choir, she sang light and lyric. Today, she's singing Wagner. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Jocelyn, what about this journey that she's taken over these last few years to bring her where she is today? Thank you. I think one of the most important things for big voices Please. Voices that stuck in my ear is time. And uh, I was lucky that I had so many wonderful mentors and teachers that gave me the time to grow as a singer, the time to grow as a person, um, opportunities to perform. Um, and yes, they encouraged me always, which was really wonderful. I think for big voices, it can feel intimidating. You have to wait perhaps a little bit longer. And I've been told to wait <laughs> a lot. And I was very fortunate to have really wonderful mentors to, to keep me motivated and to keep me singing. So Wagner you're going to sing, and what is the Wagner? I am going to sing Wagner. Uh, so this is Elizabeth's first aria from Wagner's opera Tannhäuser. Uh, and I thought this was particularly fitting today in this aria. Elizabeth arrives into the hall that she's not been in since Tannhäuser left. And upon arriving into the hall, she's so overcome with emotions, excitement, and love, and maybe probably a little bit of anxiety that she sings about it. And I think that's fitting. Dich teurer Halle. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Chris. Uh, what a wonderful piece. It's so unique in the repertoire, this aria and the tonality of it and, and everything. And it's so wonderful to hear a, a young soprano uh, um, launch into this re repertoire. It's very exciting. Also exciting is to have a chance to introduce Dante Mullin Santone, I hope I said your last name correctly. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Truly. <laughs> to well you, done. very exciting on, on several levers, levels. Um, Dante and I met over a Zoom class last year, yet another class where um, I was teaching leader this time, third year. Dante is currently enrolled in his fourth year at the University of Toronto and we had a very wonderful leader class, but it was all in those environments where you think, how can music happen here? But music can happen everywhere, and that's the reaffirming experience that uh, COVID has taught us, right? And um, Dante has a very interesting relationship to music and kind of represents, um, as you beautifully put it in, in your bio, this, this new idea of, um, type of musician and, and uh, multi-involved, multi-faceted singer. And I just wanted you to say a few words about your musical backgrounds and your passion, especially when it comes to blues and jazz yeah. and rock and... Uh, yeah, I, I fell in love listening to the hard rock of the 60s and 70s when I was in high school and it just sort of opened my eyes to this whole world of um, not music, but musics, you know? We sort of tend to think about it in this monolithic sense, but there's so many different traditions and, and fantastic ways to interact with, with what we do. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the privilege of yeah. being able to interact with all these fantastic styles. It's wonderful, you know, for, for many singers, I mean, I of course grow up, I grew up with opera singers around me every day. But there's a little part of me that wanted to sing like Freddie Mercury uh -huh. in, in Queen. And, and that, you know, sometimes was more of a stimulation um, or as much of a stimulation. And the other thing that uh, I love about your musical choices is this idea of instrumental music, because now everything is four and a half minutes long and it has text that repeats. And this kind of music that you're mm -hmm. drawn to are these big orchestral, almost yeah. symphonic rock uh, um, yeah. Can you say a few words about it? Sure. Yeah. Oh, there's this um, song by Deep Purple, Anthem, which has a, a string quartet uh, playing a fugue in the middle of it, and it feels so of a piece with, with, the, uh, with the song that's a rock song, and that fusion of styles and that uh, interplay between uh, this very long tradition of classical music and, and this what was then a very new idea for music and a new, a new direction for it. Um, is so interesting to me wonderful. and exciting. Wonderful. Well, if you, if you are familiar with Led Zeppelin, it's never too late. Um, <laughs> Dante will sing for you Donne mie le frate a tanti from the opera Così fan tutti by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mm. Um, very brief introduction of this, this aria, if you wouldn't mind, just to mm. set it up for us. Uh, Guglielmo, a soldier, is consoling and attempting to rally his comrade Ferrando whose fiance has proven to be unfaithful. Uh, and he launches into this tirade, saying, Donne mie la fatia tanti. Ladies, you do this to so many. And uh, he can't help but allow his true thoughts of admiration for said ladies to interrupt his tirade from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Dante. Wonderful. Oh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you um, Gabriel Turgeon. Um, I was mentioning at the very beginning that there are certain stages in your career when, um, when you kind of get a little bit older and you realize that you're suddenly hosting events like this. And there's another stage in your career when suddenly the children of um, people you went to university with end up being your students somehow. <laughs> it's definitely a stepping stone. And I was very lucky to meet Gabrielle last year, again in the leader class. Um, Gabrielle's parents are both very accomplished, wonderful pianists. Actually, um, Gabrielle's mother, Anne Louise, studied with the same piano teacher as my wife Carolyn, um, Marietta Orlov, who sadly passed away last year. But there's such connection always, and music keeps us connected. Um, Gabrielle, welcome. Um, I was fascinated last year, there was a project that you were involved with at the opera school, which um, was it called the Diversity Concert? Yes. Um, and um, I, there was a little, apart from knowing so much about your, your parents, there was a little part that I didn't really know. Would you? Care to ex expand on that, what you sang? Yeah, so I, I sang a piece called Linstead Market, which is um, Jamaican, Jamaican mento music. Um, my grandma, who's watching on the live stream today, she's from Jamaica. <laughs> Hi, grandma. Um, <laughs> she's from Jamaica. She's actually Jamaican Chinese, actually. Um, and I wanted to um, sing something that represented her heritage for this diversity concert. So I asked her, I said, what, what kind of music? And she's like, you know, I don't. I don't remember too much, but I remember this one, Dancing on the Beach in Jamaica. So <laughs> you should sing that one. <laughs> so I sang, that's what I sang, Linstead Market, yeah. Beautiful, thank you. Today, Gabrielle will be singing the Snow Maiden's aria by the opera The Snow Maiden by uh, Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. Say just a few words about it, thank yeah. you. So um, The Snow Maiden, or Snegorovska in Russian, is a, it's a Russian folk tale. Um, 
And essentially, she's this mythical creature. She lives in the forest with her parents, uh, the King Frost and Fairy Spring. And her one wish is to go into the human village um, and uh, sing songs, pick berries. But if she goes to the human village, her heart of ice will melt and she'll perish. So in this aria, she's begging her father to allow her to go so she can live out her, her life's dream. Thank you, Gabrielle. What a stunning piece. What a stunning piece. I have to admit, I've never heard that before. I can't wait to see that whole opera someday. Wonderful. Hi, Hi David. <laughs> David. Oh, yet another, um, another, oh my gosh, not too close, not too close. Forgot, I forgot. David is the kind of person that when you, when you teach him online, you just want to meet him in person. And I'm so lucky to have been able to do that last year. It started off like all the other years, David is in the opera school in his first year, second year, second year, no, of course, second, second year, yes. yeah. 
Um, and we were working together in various reperts, r repertoire and some Mozart. And this year we're working on the Barber of Seville. Ooh. And <laughs> it's so thrilling to meet you. Um, we've had such a diverse um, um, group of people here from really continents. And um, David, uh, not to diminish your experience, but David is a Toronto guy. I'm from here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's very um, it, special in a way. And I wanted you to just talk a little bit about your, maybe your background and also how your, your entry into music in, in this incredibly vibrant city where actually there's so much happening in terms of opera um, that is unique to Toronto. It's a great city. Yeah, Just well, say a few words. About of course. Yeah. Well, I've lived here my whole life, as he said, and I love it here, but it's, I, I got into the music scene pretty late in my career, I guess you could say. I only started singing in a rat, like it, I really started at my first year of university at U of T. That was when it all kind of started, but yeah, the music scene here is so vibrant and so amazing. And yeah, you meet so many amazing people like Russell Braun, <laughs> who's the best. But it's, I love it so much. I also love biking all around this city. I would have biked into this room if I could have, but alas. Bicycle. Uh, but yes, bicycle. Bicycle, yeah, exactly. Okay. So I do that all around the city. My mom, who's here, taught me well. She's been biking her whole life, and so will I. So <laughs> that's where most of my practicing happens, actually. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Well, um, David will be singing um, the first aria of the Count from the Barber of Seville. Um, uh, oh, it doesn't say here, that, but it's, um, can you tell us? Ecco ridente, of course. Yes. Um, ecco ridente in cielo. Um, say a few words to introduce yeah. this, this scene and, yeah. and what's, what's going on here. And then we'll hear once more Christopher Doss, who's doing an amazing job today, <laughs> right? <laughs> Such, such diverse repertoire to bring to life at the piano. Thank you. So go ahead. So in this aria, this is the first aria that the Count sings, and it's actually the aria that kind of opens the show. And basically in this aria, um, the Count is professing his love to Rosina, who is up in her room asleep, and all he wants is for her to come down and for he just wants to give her some love. So. <laughs>
Well, we have come to the end of our wonderful salon this afternoon. First of all, a huge thanks to Russell for being our wonderful host. Thank you. Thank you. And let me add to everybody out on the live stream watching that this is not over for you yet. You still have a wonderful opportunity if you want to do so to contribute and support these young singers. Go to OrpheusChoirToronto.com or just check, the, check out the donation option, options on the bottom of your screen. As for if the I rest can of add, you... Sorry to interrupt you. This program is wonderful because it supports the singers at the moment when you need it most. You know, when, when you're just towards the end of your studies, in between, when you don't know what's going on, not to mention COVID. So this is just the perfect uh, organization and the perfect program to support all the singers. Sorry, Marshall, Bob. Thank you. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And all those of you here, as soon as the live stream ends, will also have an opportunity to fill out those pledge cards, should you wish, and give them to our desk at the back before you enter onto the patio and have a wonderful afternoon tea here at the Old Mill. So before we leave, I think the scholars are hopefully about to enter and come back. Don't be shy. That just leaves one more little task after we've thanked everybody who's here today and thanking you for being here to let you know how the tally of this afternoon's fundraiser has been slowly creeping up over the course of this afternoon. And right now we currently stand at, drum roll please. Thank you. 36,310. Thank you. It does my heart good, it does the Orpheus heart good, and thank you all so very, very much for this unbelievable support. Thank you today for the privilege of your time, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.